Hi, Beth. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, now, your, your job is mannequins. Yes. One of your jobs. One of my jobs. One of your jobs. I have to tell you, as a, as a cosplayer and costumer and someone who has put a lot of things on mannequins, I hate mannequins like few other things in the world. You're nodding, and that's making me sad because I was hoping you would say, no, there's a secret to mannequins, and if you only knew it, it would make your life easy. Is there no secret? It's... I think the secret is patience and practice. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm really dying to hear about what the mannequin situation is here at the Smithsonian and how you guys go about it. Yeah. So um, I'm the textile conservator here. So I do, well, for the transformation team. Okay. So I do both flat textiles and the garments and then the mounting. So with our mannequins, we use the Dorfman um, Athafoam form. The ones that we use are the sturdier versions, kind of the more reinforced versions because they're all quite top heavy. So everybody you see here is for Gallery 203 Nation of Speed. Okay. Yeah, so everything is related to kind of speed records and right. just history points around speed. So when you say it's an archival foam, that means it's not off-gassing anymore. Yep, it it's doesn't inert. do anything to degrade. Yeah. Do you still have to coat the foam in something to also provide a barrier? Mm, yes and no. So okay. we, the materials that we use are inert as well. So the right. padding that we use is a polyester batting mm -hmm. with no resin, so that's inert. The covering is a polyester stockinette. Okay. I'm using polyester thread. They're all really good. We actually had a mannequin that I found stamped from 1997, same manufacturer, still looked good. Amazing. Yeah, so I trust these you know, mannequins to stay inert for a long time. Um, but they come quite slim. Yes. And we are not a necessarily always slim collection. <laughs> sure. Yeah, and so I pad them up um, because they are, they come with a little bit of adjustability. Um, I get involved with my foam knife. There's a lot of cutting and heat welding to build things up change dimensions and proportions so you'll to make add, them fit the that, object. When you say heat welding, you mean you're adding like open cell foam and... It's the same at the foam. So we buy it in block. Oh, yeah. this is the stuff. So ah. that's much denser. Yes. So that's what their cores are made out of. Okay. And then the top foam is a two pound, which is much squishier. Of course. That makes a lot yeah. of sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's a Bolara, which is another closed cell foam. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just a um, smoother surface, so I use and, that for finish work. And all of these are pieces that you use in order to add correct bulk so that the yep. costumes fill up. Exactly. And so I'll go back in after. So like these guys, I can't change their waist dimensions, right? Right. So I have to cut them in half and then put in an extra block. Oh. So all of our taller gentlemen over there have an extra two inches added to their length. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Especially when it's a jumpsuit. It's got to fit in the torso before I can put it in. I think when I look at these racing suits, I know that they're of a fairly recent human vintage. Yes. Which means that you'd have more latitude to get the mannequins in and out of them, but you also sometimes have to dress things with zippers that are 100 years old. What is that like? That's where sometimes we do a little bit of cheating if you have to. Sometimes closures don't want to close, so you make false closures. Okay. Yeah, so that we can get in and out without having to put any strain on the original hardware. I would imagine that's really important. Yeah. Now, the, the biggest issue I have is getting a mannequin to look like there's a person inside. Mm -hmm. it, and everything up till that looks awful. Am I right? Is yes. You, oh, is this also your hardest part of this? Yeah, exactly. I'm always Darn. running around having people come in and say, I'm like, does it look like a person? Because at the end of the day, these are people with stories. Right. I want to display their story and themselves with respect. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, the posability helps a little bit. Yeah. So if you go online, line. Um, yeah. So yeah, their arms, sorry. No so no their problems. arms do bend. Like yep. I can bend these joints. At the end of the day, it is something that is, textiles are three-dimensional things that have a lot of mobility that we then make static again. <laughs> right. So um, any type of pose that we can do helps. Um, so Liam Dwyer is still uh, in process, but yeah. I think he's a good example. Um, so he races for Mazda, um, but he is an amputee. He was a vet from the Marine Corps. Okay. And he still drives a six-speed manual. Amazing. Yeah, so he is in process at the moment. So you'll see we don't have his prosthesis on. Um, he also has a sock and a shoe. Yeah. Um, we've decided to mostly to display the shoes not on the mannequins. Oh, interesting. Um, he's an exception. Um, so that's why everybody has these kind of toes and socks. 
to keep everything neutral. Copy. And then um, with him, we'll put his shoe on. But because we want to be able to see his prosthesis, yeah. um, we've gone and he sent us his clutch pedal. Oh my gosh. Yes, which connects to his specifically made prosthesis. No way. Yeah. The clutch pedal actually mounts to his prosthesis? Yeah, so this, we just attached this this morning. It's funny, you came at a good time. <laughs> yeah, and so when he's displayed, he's gonna have one foot forward. On the clutch. Yeah, so his final height isn't set yet, so I can adjust the leg height. I'll build out the thigh, and then he can be more of his proper height. But that's another bit of posability. Yeah, that, right, right. Do you, I, you must end up sometimes like, daydreaming about these, these figures to kind of figure out like what is the because it's at, what I have found the hardest part is the legs and I stop yeah. worrying about them I actually get three-quarter torso mannequins mm -hmm. I stuff posable arms on them like the $60 ones on Amazon and that gets me a lot more freedom because just just getting a thing in a mannequin in a thing is a nightmare yeah but these really I mean the gesture in these is really lovely I can it's like but I'm so sad that you tell me it's just brute force and a lot of work and a lot of time and yeah, gentle force when conservation, but yes, <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> yeah. yes, um, yeah, and it's you know it's just working with our sister departments around here. So I'm working with the weld shop to you know do external supports where needed. So I think oh, Roscoe right. is a really good example of that where you know he can free stand because our welders came and oh made a rear mount for his weight yeah so he's um normally we have heel plates on everybody if you've got a pant leg i can do a heel plate which right. is nice and then i have to carve cavity carve into the back of the calf so that i can on things that are tight like right, aaron right. sills over there in the black and white i gotta zip all the way down her ankle so i need that heel plate to be nice and tight right but him, I didn't have that option with the boots. So my welders made me oh, nice. this that lovely stand. And then we don't have his shirt tucked in so that we right. can put less strain yeah, on it. Disappears. Now, yeah. who is this, by the way? So, sorry. So this is Roscoe Turner. Okay. He was a barnstormer and set quite a few speed records for racing. I love the visible stitching on his little ear pads. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he used to wear it flipped up, and they wanted us to oh. display it flipped up, and I was like, that's a little too much strain for that very soft weather. <laughs> I really want to put a mustache on him. You really just, should. That was part of his look. He's going to get a temporary one until he goes so, on display. I'll tell you, there's an Etsy store out of Sochi, Russia, called Fake Beard Wig, <laughs> and I've been buying some yak hair beards from them. And oh, funny. You, you could send them this, and they would make you a little on netting, and be like... <laughs> A hundred bucks, fifty bucks. Oh wow! Um, I so is, am I right? This is this suit. Yes. Well, so he had multiples. Okay. So this was his look that he right. came up with when right. he was barnstorming. It's based on a military esque style. Right. Um, but it's his own monogram that it is, he and had it's in here. It's a slightly different monogram than here. Yeah. So there's variation. So we have huh. a, a number of these jackets, a number of these pants. Amazing. Um, but only two shirts and one tie, which is funny. So part of his <laughs> estate came to us. So uh, it's been previously displayed without the shirt and the tie. And so when he came in, I was like, all right, he needs the full outfit. Are you going to get the scarf? The little... No, not that <laughs> scarf. I know. So he does and doesn't wear it. It's funny. And the boots are at different heights. We don't have the. Um, oh the gators and all that right. stuff, so. I mean, just as a customer who's done a tremendous amount of research, it's really incredible to be able to see this and see this and see, like I'm constantly attuned to where I would be wrong. Mm -hmm. But they'd be like, these pockets look like they're different. And yeah. no, they're not. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's so much variation. Like that belt is a different belt from this. Right. But he all has a bunch of the type. His, um, this cracks me up. He just cut this down to size and put an extra button on here. <laughs> With the original button you can see like absolutely not the original fittings so great that's a great little bit of storytelling yeah i was talking to a, the customer of ghostbusters and oh, we were talking cool. about old school um just like making things look weathered and he mm. said one of the things that everyone forgets is shoulder burn and that a customer can look at a piece from a vintage movie and know it's not right because the shoulders are just like perfect and he's like, every old garment that anyone has is going to be just a little bit lighter here. Mm -hmm. And I, just, I had no idea. I love that kind of insight. Yeah. 
So you work on each of these figures to kind of find that balance of both the padding and the height and the distribution in order to get that. Do you walk through the galleries sometimes after you've done this and they're like not quite right? <laughs> Yes. Do you then have to tell the guard and show them your ID and then adjust a little? Well, we try to do as much as we can in the case, but of we course. also, so these have all been actually, so there's different types of mannequins you can use, yeah. right? You can use these foams ones. You can use something um, like a fiberglass mannequin mm -hmm. that is much more rigid underneath. Because these are squishier mannequins, yeah. I like to treat these mannequins like a quilt. If I was going to hang a quilt, you hang it in the lab and you let it drop. You let gravity affect it for a couple yeah. of weeks. Then you do your adjustments so you don't get any surprises in the case. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yes. So these guys have all been in the lab for a couple of weeks. They're just getting their wear out. Exactly. So something like, I think the, the larger blue t-shirt's a good example. So that was bought new. Yes. Never been worn, valuable curatorial object. So it falls into a little bit of a different classification. But because I knew that that knit fabric, which is going to drop and distort with gravity. Right, right. I let that sit on that mannequin for about a month, which is more than we'd normally do. <laughs> but he falls under a different category. But it's a brand new, yeah. It's right, a brand new right. shirt. And it has already started to distort down a little bit. So I've padded him out a tiny bit to amazing. accommodate for that. That's amazing. Yeah. Beth, thank you so much. I really was hoping you'd have some secret talisman to tell me about mannequins, but you've mostly just, uh, uh, what do you call it, corroborated my experience and I guess for that, I have to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing work. And it must be really nice having these figures come to life around you. It's really rewarding, honestly. I'm so, so proud to be a part of this process to help people see these amazing accomplishments of individuals and to be able to display with respect yeah. all of this stuff. Oh, it's really lovely. Thanks.